Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Warp Citadel and this is going to be the video guide for Warp Citadel. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is the first boss which is the mage and there's going to be four roles. So the main role is going to be the tank. So you can see over here, Kupo is the tank and he will usually tank the boss at around 6 o'clock-ish over here and making the boss face this way. It doesn't really matter which way the boss faces because most of his attacks are AoE anyway, but just having a standard is nice. The other three players who are doing roles are going to be myself, Zin over here, and Brian over here. And the reason why we pick ranged players to do it is because it's the three furthest people will get marked and they will do mechanics. So what will happen during phase at 80% is that these three circles over here are going to light up and they're going to light up in different colors and this order is always going to be different every single time and other than that the three furthest targets which is going to be myself, Zin, and Brian over here we're all going to get different colors assigned to us. This is also random and it's assigned by the boss. So there are three different colors. There is purple, there is orange, and there is green. So in this video, during the first phase, you'll see that I get a green color. And then once you get your color, you want to immediately run towards your pillar with the same corresponding color. So in this footage, you'll see that I stand over here, but then this is the green pillar. So I will need to mad dash over here before the boss activates the pillar and starts the mechanic on my pillar. So the boss points at a random pillar and he'll do it three times. So the full phase for this boss is split into three phases. As I said before, it's going to be one, two, and three. These three are going to always light up first. So the mechanic is rather simple. What I'm going to do as the far mark is I quickly run to the corresponding color. So in this case, I'm green. So I run to the green pillar and I'm going to chill here at 16 meters and DPS the boss while waiting for the boss to activate my pillar. The boss will point towards my pillar and it'll activate. And the pillar will shoot a beam of light into the air and that's when I know it's activated. Once it's activated as the mark, I need to touch the pillar and run towards the boss. The reason why I need to run close to the boss is because I will be teleported with the tank. And what Kupo does as the tank is he wants to run towards the other side over here because there's going to be another pillar here. So what I need to do as the mark, my job, is to touch this pillar to activate it and quickly run across to touch the opposite pillar to deactivate this pillar and activate this one. And it's the same for all the other marks. So let's say that this one's the yellow one and in this video's case it was Zin that activates this one. So Zin's gonna wait over here at 16 meters, wait for the boss to point at the pillar, the pillar activates, he's gonna touch the pillar and then quickly run towards the boss. At the same time while that's happening, Kupo is going to start running towards this pillar over here because they're going to be swapping places. This is automatic, the tank will always be swapped with the, with the mark. There are other methods to do this, but this is the method that I do with my pre-made. And that is the basic gist of this boss fight. It's relatively simple, it's not too difficult once you understand what's going on. So I'm going to play the video and I'm just going to wait until it gets to my point of view when he activates my pillar. That way you can see from my perspective what it actually looks like as doing the mark. So uh, let's roll the video. So over here at the beginning it's rather simple. We're just going to brain dead DPS until 80%. So over here you want to iframe that knockback. You cannot block that 360 knockback. And so we just DPS and you're going to notice now that it says he conjures the hex circle stones. So what's going to happen is there's going to be three pillars over here that's going to come up and over here on my buff bar on the left side you want to notice that I'm going to get a random color. So in this video I do get the green color so we'll see that happen soon. And boom you see that the moment that these uh, lasers have connected to the pillars so you can see this one's an orange color, however I have a green color over here so I need to find the green pillar. And you'll notice if you look carefully behind that the green pillar is over there. However I'm in the middle of a run and I don't actually see it so I scan the right side as well. See I scan the right side and I see oh this is the purple pillar. So that means that if, there's, if the orange was behind me and the purple's here there's only one place for the green one to be and that's going to be this one. So again, this was orange, this was purple, so this has to be green. So immediately I need to run towards the green pillar. 
So while I'm running towards the green pillar, you can see over here that the boss has activated the first hex circle. So in this case, I was very lucky that he didn't activate my pillar first because if he activated my pillar first, I would be very, very late. I wouldn't be able to run across and make it in time. Luckily, he pointed at the orange one first. So when he points at the orange one, so in this case, it was Zin who has the orange mark. He needs to run over to touch the pillar. Once he touches the pillar, he needs to run towards the boss and he wants to be around here. And while this is happening, Kupo wants to run the other way away from the boss towards this pillar over here. The reason why is because Zin as well as Kupo are going to swap places. This way it lets the tank have an easier time because he's close to the boss to avoid the pizza attack and it allows the mark over here to have an easier time to touch the other pillar. So we're going to see that happen now. So you see here they activates the first pillar by pointing at it and once he points at it you'll see that it starts shining and the moment it activates there is a beam of light that goes up into the sky so it's very obvious to see when it's activated the moment it's activated whoever has the orange mark needs to touch the pillar and it needs to mad dash towards the boss while this is happening the tank who's normally over here needs to mad dash to the opposite side so if we look at the mini map over here you'll see that Zin is over here and you'll see that Kupo is already in position because what's going to happen is Zin's role as the orange mark is he needs to touch this pillar to activate it then he needs to touch the opposite side's pillar before the pizza attack hits this pillar and what happens is Zin as well as Kupo are going to swap places so Zin wants to be here when he gets swapped and Kupo wants to be in this position when he gets swapped that way it lets Zin touch the pillar super easily by just walking over and it allows Koopa over here to avoid the pizza attack easily by just sidestepping. And that is why we do this method. There are other methods to do this, however this is the method that I use. So we're just going to continue to roll the video and I'm just going to stop when it's in my perspective because he does this three times. So you see he points out the orange one and you see there's a pizza attack. And then there's the uh, donut attack that will happen. And after this, he's going to point at the second circle. So you see here, activates the second hex circle. So again, over here, it's random. He might point at my pillar or he might point at the purple pillar. So luckily, in this case, he points at the purple pillar. And we're going to see Brian and Kupo do the mechanic here. So here, I messed up. I thought a point he pointed at the green one, but he didn't. So it's fine. I just wait at 16 meters and just wait until he does point at my pillar. And boom, now it says he's activated the third hex circle and you'll see that there's it starts glowing and there's going to be a beam of light that shoots up. So we're going to see that soon and boom, you see that black beam of light that the moment that goes up, it means this is activated and I can touch this pillar. The moment I touch the pillar, I want to start running towards the boss like this. You'll see that you'll see that once I touch the pillar, I immediately tactical roll towards the boss. The reason is because you'll notice that my buff has changed. It used to be just a solid green color without a countdown timer. But the moment you touch the pillar over here, you'll get a 10 second timer. And at nine seconds, you get teleported. So the moment you touch it, you just want to start mad dashing towards the boss because it's you only have one second before you get teleported with the tank. So you're going to see now that I get teleported and I get swapped places with Kupo. So you see here, there's a conduction and boom, you see, instantly I get teleported towards the pillar that I need to connect to. And at the same time, Kupo's teleported right here. So the original positions I was in, I was standing here, Kupo was standing here, and boom, we got swap places now. So for me, I can simply just take a step, touch the pillar, and I finish my mechanic. And for Kupo over here, since he's close to the boss, it's easy for him to dodge the pizza mechanic or the pizza damage just by sidestepping or SSing. So notice here that the pillar has a countdown timer. So I've got five seconds left to touch the pillar. But since Kubo teleported me right here, I have plenty of time to touch the touch the pillar and five seconds is more than enough. I believe the actual timer gives you 10 seconds total, but that is from the moment you touch the original pillar and this pillar will start counting down 10 seconds. So it is possible to do it with a gunner just by, just by hooking across. However, I prefer to use this method with the tank and the teleporting style. 
um, but that is the main mechanic. You'll see that I touch the pillar and boom, it says the hex circles is reversed and damages the boss. So once you connect all three pillars, you see that one, the one that I connected and the one we connected there, it creates another triangle. And once this triangle is activated, it does mech damage to the boss. It actually does 22% damage to the boss, which is very, very good. So then it's rinse and repeat. We're back to regular phase. Just make sure to iframe the 5-hit explosion over here. And then boom, it's right into phase again. If you have low DPS, you go into phase at 40%, just, just a heads up. So once again, he conjures the hexstone circles. You see they light up. And this time, you'll notice that I have an orange color now instead of green. So what I need to do is I need to find the orange pillar now. So you'll notice that I'm getting knocked around and boom, I found the orange pillar. So you have to react very fast because luckily I was standing over here and he activated the orange pillar first. If I was further away and he activated my pillar first, I might not have been able to make it. So I was very fortunate here that the orange pillar was very close to me and he activated first. So I quickly need to run into it because you see the black beam of light shooting up into the air and I need to activate my pillar. So you see, I activate my pillar and again, immediately I have my 10 seconds ticking down. I need to tactical roll or I need to run towards the boss as I will be switching places with Kupo now. So I run towards the boss and boom, pop, I get swapped with the tank. And again, Kupo has placed himself over here right in front of the tower. So I can immediately touch the pillar and stop this countdown. If this countdown does hit zero, it explodes and it does a lot of damage in normal mode. However, in hard mode, it will wipe the party. So you see over here, boom, I touch it and we're good. And again, he's going to do the donut attack. And right after the donut attack, he's going to activate the next pillar. So boom, it says he's activated the second pillar. He's pointed at the purple colored one. He zaps that and boom, they've swapped places and there's a pizza attack. In normal mode, you can face tank the pizza or iframe the pizza. As you can see, Koopo did face tank the pizza and took a lot of damage. However, in hard mode, that pizza will kill you. So again, he'll do the donut attack. Then right after this, he's going to point at the third circle. So again, he points at the third circle, which is the green one. So you see Alessi over there touches it. She did not get very far, unfortunately. You can see that it's still standing there, or technically you would prefer to be around here. Um, so what I recommend for warlocks or people with low mobility is to touch the pillar and immediately SS backwards because that'll cover more distance. But you'll see here that Elesti is going to be swapped with Kupo. And boom, you see Kupo's now over here. But however, you see the pizza's coming over here. So in hard mode, this would not be ideal because the tank has no way to escape the pizza. You ideally want the tank to be here so that he can SS there or he can SS here to avoid the pizza damage. However, in normal mode, you can just iframe it and you'll be protected or you can just face tank it and it does significant damage and that's it. So you'll see here that boom, he just iframes it and the boss is dead because of the mech damage. And voila, that is it for the first boss. So let's move on to the mini boss. So over here is the mini boss, which is the giant chicken, or I don't know if this is a bird or a chicken or whatever it is. I call it a chicken. It's very easy. It's literally just DPS it until it dies. However, if you are doing hard mode, what will happen is the chicken will use fire breath on the furthest target and create a death zone. So in this case, because I'm the furthest target and everyone gets close to the boss, he's going to fire breath me and he's going to create a cone like death zone like this. And if anyone's in the death zone, they're going to die. The only safe area is right behind the boss. So you probably will need a gunner or someone with high mobility to stand maybe here at maybe 10 meters or 9 meters while everyone else is hugging the boss behind him. And that way, the moment he does the fire breath and is about to do the death zone, they can SS through the boss into the safe zone. However, since this is normal mode, it's just brain dead DPS and you kill it before it does anything special. So you'll just see here that we just brain dead DPS and it's going to die. Boom, boom, boom. And this is going to be the flame breath. You'll see that he says it's watching someone. This is targeted to the furthest person. And then boom. So this is the flame breath that he does. Um, it doesn't do much damage. However, after the flame breath, he will create a death zone. So after the flame breath, you need to SS behind the boss in order to be in the safe zone. 
Um, however, in normal mode, again, you don't need anything. The boss just dies. And now here is the last boss. The last boss is a little bit tricky. However, with the cheese method, it makes it a lot easier. So for this boss fight, I highly recommend you to activate the big map. In order to activate the big map, you simply press the comma key on your keyboard and it'll open up the big map over here because you will need to look at the map most of the time. So what happens is this map is going to be divided into half like that. So you want the tank to tank at six o'clock and you want three people over here and this is normal. This is not soul separation and you want three people over here and this is soul separation. OK, so what determines people in soul separation? It's simply the three furthest targets are going to be sent into soul sap. So in this case, it's rather simple. It's because Zin is a gunner, Alessi is a warlock and I'm a summoner. So the three of us are going to be at range. We're just going to stand at 16 meters and DPS the boss. The reason why we stand at 16 meters is because none of the boss attacks will reach us if we stand at 16 meters. Unfortunately, for people who are not in soul sap, these players are usually going to be the melee players and unfortunately they will need to block the attacks and avoid a lot of the attacks because they will hurt. However, just remember that the three furthest people are going to be put into soul separation and the three close people are going to stay outside in the normal realm and that the map will always be split down in half just like this. It will always be soul separation on the right side and it's always going to be normal on the left side. So what I'm going to do for this boss fight is I'm just going to roll the clip and I'm just going to explain as things happen, mainly because there's a lot of things that happen. And with the cheese method, it makes it a lot more easier as you don't have to do as many mechanics. So let's just roll the video and I'll explain as things happen. So over here, I'm just going to DPS the boss. Unfortunately, I am standing at 15 meters and not 16 meters. So you're going to see that I get knocked back because I get hit by his big attack over here and boom. So you really want to stand at exactly 16 meters and you won't get hit by any attack like right here where I'm standing. So you just keep attacking the boss till 85%. 85% is when he goes into phase, but we bursted really hard. So uh, it's already 78%. But what happens now is it'll say here that the Dread Prince is starting the domination field. Once this text comes up, he's going to do this room wide AOE attack that doesn't hurt you. However, it automatically scans the room and sends the three furthest people into soul separation. So when this happens, you need to make sure that the three furthest people are on this side of the map and not on this side or else they will automatically die. So you can see the team composition right now. We've got three far people here and we've got the three close people here. And you'll see, boom, now we're in soul separation because we have this funky view looking thing. And once we're in soul separation, we need to stun the boss. His CC bars will open immediately and we need to stun it. So once you stun the boss, you can just continue to DPS. You'll notice that we have hammers on our head. So everyone starts with two hammers. These hammers play a big part in hard mode or the traditional method of doing this dungeon. However, with the cheese method that we're doing, we don't care about the hammers and we can just ignore it and just brain dead DPS. So you're going to see here that we're just going to attack the boss, attack the boss, and we're going to wait until he does a pizza attack. This original pizza attack does not do damage. However, you're going to see that there's this pizza starts clocking and starts charging up this way. That pizza attack will hurt and you need to self iframe that or else you'll lose about 80% of your HP if you get hit by it in normal mode and in hard mode that will kill you. So you'll see that this is the one you need to iframe boom. And right after that, you'll see that there's a small a small pizza over here. You really want to avoid getting hit by this attack as well if you are melee because it hurts a lot and it applies bleed stacks. So boom. And once he finishes the normal side, he always attacks normal side first. Then he's going to flip around and do the same attack but on soul separation side. So you're going to see now that he's charging up a pizza over here and is charging up this way. And again, I'm going to need to iframe this or else I will lose 80% of my health and uh, yeah, take a lot of damage. You see here that I self iframe, boom, take no damage. And you'll see that just then that there's a little charge up over there. You want to avoid that damage as well. Since you're ranged, you shouldn't be that close to the boss anyway, so you don't get hit by that. And once he's done two half pizzas attacks, we need to either KD the boss or stun the boss. It doesn't really matter what CC you use, but you need to CC the boss again. And once that finishes, he's going to do quarter pizza attacks. So what we can see on the mini map is you'll see that the map is going to be divided into quarters. It's going to this is going to be a death zone and this is going to be a death zone. So soul separation team, we want to stand over here 
and as well as the people who are not in soul separation they want to stand over here and we're going to wait until this death zone explodes and this death zone explodes and we're going to rotate over because what's going to happen is this will become the new death zone and this will become the new death zone and you're going to see that happen here so in my point of view right here i want to be standing around here because this is going to be the death zone and then once this side explodes I'm going to need to start strafing over here because this is going to become the new death zone. So we'll see that happen now. You see, once we just DPS a little bit more and boom, you see how he splits the maps into quarters. So this is the death zone in the normal realm and this is the death zone in soul separation. So normal team stands over here, soul separation team stands over here and we're going to switch over and they're going to switch over when uh, they explode. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Over here, I stood too close to the line and I got clipped and you can see that I lost a lot of my HP. Um, you really want to be a little bit safer and stand more like here just to avoid any random shenanigans like this because that really hurt and it was really dumb of me to get hit by that. So immediately I can iframe this. You can iframe these attacks on normal mode, but however, again, on hard mode, they will kill you. So we're just DPSing, DPSing, and now it is the might phase. So this is the point of view in soul separation. I will show you the point of view outside of soul separation after we finish the mechanics here. So for people in soul separation, you'll notice that there's a bunch of mites. The main mites that we're concerned of are the big ones around the map and not all these little ones. These little ones over here, we can ignore. All of these little mites are only for challenge mode. We don't care about any of these unless you're doing challenge mode. What we do care about are the big mites over here with the little shield. So this is where the tank plays an important role. The boss in this phase is going to constantly throw hammers towards the tank. So what the tank needs to do is he needs to target the hammers to hit the mites over here. The way we do it is we rotate clockwise. So Koopo is going to start at 9 o'clock. The boss is going to throw a hammer at the 9 o'clock mite. Then he's going to rotate over here. Then the boss is going to throw a hammer towards this mite at 10 o'clock. Then Koopo is going to rotate here. Then is going to throw another hammer, so forth and so on, and Koopo is just going to keep going until he reaches 6 o'clock. The reason Koopo does this is because the mites over here have a shield, and the only way to take off the shield is by the boss's hammer. So the reason why we have Koopo rotate all the way from 9 o'clock all the way till 6 o'clock is because there is the off chance that sometimes the tank might not aim the hammer correctly, and the hammer may not hit the mite, might miss the mite, and so we just have him rotate constantly. So for the person who's actually killing the mites in soul separation, we have an easier time to know what's going on. So in this footage of soul separation, me and Alessi don't do anything. We can just DPS the boss. However, Zin over here is doing the mechanic. So what he needs to do is he needs to collect three hammers. So you can see that he has two hammers right now. In order to collect a hammer, he needs to step on these little orbs. You'll see on the map that there are little orbs in the middle and then there are big orbs over here on the outskirts. So these big orbs on the outskirts give two hammers and the little ones on the middle give one hammer. And you want to make sure that you have three hammers in order to kill the mite without the shield. So we're going to see over there, you see the moment that the boss threw the hammer over there, it clipped this mite and it broke his shield. So this mite can now be killed with three hammers. At the same time, you see over here, Zin has picked up three hammers because he picked up the little orb that looks like that over here. So now he has three hammers. So now what he needs to do is run over here next to the mite and jump. The moment he jumps, he'll create a shockwave, which will kill this mite. And what Zin wants to do is he wants to rotate to this mite as well once his shield is broken and rotate again to this mite over here, so forth and so on. So basically Zin's going to run from here to this mite, jump with three hammers, kill this mite, and he's going to wait until this mite's shield is broken. And while he's waiting, he needs to make sure that he has three hammers. He's going to stand next to the mite, jump and kill it. He's going to run over here and wait for this shield to be broken and then again jump with three hammers and kill it. So you want to kill three mites, however for the off chance if Koopo misses this mite for example, then Zin would kill this mite and immediately move to the far one, to the 12 o'clock mite and so forth and so on, just keep moving clockwise. And this is the method that we use. So you'll see over here that Zin is hooking towards the mite and so now pay close attention over here as Zin is going to jump and kill that mite. You see, boom, he jumps, he pops the mite into the air 
And you'll notice that the might is now gone from the minimap. And then he's going to move across to this might over here as that might does not have a shield. So there was a two hammer orb over there that he picked up. So now he has three hammers again. He's going to run towards this might and he's going to jump and he's going to kill this might. And then again, he's going to run over here to the 12 o'clock one and do the exact same thing for this might. As you can see, this might shield is already broken. So to reiterate, these big ones give two stacks of hammers, these small ones give one stack of hammers. And you need to balance the stack of hammers for the people inside soul separation and the people outside of soul separation because of this bar over here. This bar looks very similar to Grand Celestial Emperor or like boss four of TT. And the way that this charges up and goes down is based off the balance of the people who are not in soul separation and the people that are in soul separation. So what you want to do is you want to have an even number of hammers. So let's say that I have three hammers over here, Alessi has two over here, and Zin over here has three. So we have a total of eight hammers. So soul separation has eight hammers. And the reason why this is charged up by one is because outside team has nine hammers. So that means that the other three players outside each have three hammers and they all have nine. And this is the reason why this is charged up by one bar. So we need to be careful because the moment that Zin jumps over here to blow this one up, he's going to lose two hammers. So it's going to charge up two more bars because over here we originally have eight. We're going to jump down to six because Zin's gonna burn two hammers to kill this might. And over here on the outside team, they still have nine hammers. So you can see that nine subtract by six is gonna be three. So it's gonna charge the bar up three times, which is very, very dangerous because if it does hit to four, it's an auto enrage and an auto wipe. So you do need to communicate with the team to make sure that the people in soul separation and the people outside have the same number of hammers and not to go over by too much. So you're going to see that now we're just going to keep rotating and Zin is going to jump again over here. You see, boom, he jumps and you'll notice that he popped. He lost two of his hammers and luckily we communicated beforehand. So this bar does not move. So while all of this is happening, the people on the outside world, whenever we kill a mite in the soul separation, it's going to become an orb. It's very similar to Ebendrake Lair, and the orb is going to slowly float towards the boss. And so there's two orbs currently that are slowly floating towards the boss. And so the other people, other than the tank, the other two players, they need to alternate block the orb. And when they block the orb, they need to block it close to the boss because the moment they block the orb, it's going to cause an animation very similar to Soul Burst and you want the animation to hit the boss in order to lower his shield during this phase. So you're gonna see that later when I show you the footage of when I am doing outside and not in soul separation. So for this part of the video, I'm just showing you soul separation. I'm just showing you what you have to do in soul sap. So you'll see here, bah, 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 bah. as for the role that I'm doing, I'm simply just running around in circles and I don't really have to do anything. And once you finish the mech phase, if you complete the mech phase successfully, it'll say here, the Dread Prince's judgment was postponed. The Dread Prince begins proclamation. When this happens, we need to try to even out the hammers. So you can see that the people outside have two more hammers than the people in soul separation. So we need two people outside to jump in order to lower this back to zero. Because if you don't lower this back to zero, the boss will do a suction attack and will daze the entire party for a couple seconds before doing a five hit explosion. However, if you balance it and it's zero, then the boss will automatically stun itself and not do the suction attack. And thus we can get more free DPS. Unfortunately here, we do not do it and we get sucked. You'll see that we're dazed a couple seconds. And once we get up, immediately he's gonna do a five hit attack. So normal mode is not a big deal. However, keep in mind that that five hit attack does screw up the tank because each of those attack gives the tank a debuff, gives the tank a bleed stack as well as a movement speed debuff, which makes the tank's life a lot harder when he actually has to do the mechanic on dodging the hammers and moving clockwise while aiming at all the mites. So you really want to iframe that or do a party protect so that the tank does not get that debuff. I'm assuming in hard mode, it will probably be fatal. However, on normal mode, it's not too bad. So that is the entire phase here. So again, it's to rinse and repeat. The next phase will start at 40%. So we're just DPSing. I'm standing at 16 meters this time, so I don't get hit by any of his attacks. And boom, again, the phase starts. It says he's starting his 
Dominion Field, which is going to send the three furthest targets into Soul Separation. Boom, the three people are now in Soul Sap, the three furthest targets. Remember, again, to stun the boss the moment you go into Soul Sap. Anyone can stun the boss, but it's very important to do so during this phase. Um, again, it can be any CC. It can be a Daze, a Stun, a KD, but we prefer to use stuns. So we stun here, and we just auto attack auto attack again he's going to do the pizza attack on the normal side first which is going to be this side over here so the people in normal who are not in soul separation they will need to self iframe this pizza first so you see here this is the one the charge up over here this is the pizza you need to iframe the pizza before that was just a preparation it does not do any damage it's the one where there's the dark thing that slowly ticks up that one you need to iframe so boom you iframe this again you want to avoid this uh, mini pizza or the melee version pizza because that gives you bleed stacks here is on the soul sap side we need to iframe this attack Boom, you see, if you do not iframe, you get chunked really hard. I went from 100% HP down to 27, so I lost 200k HP from this attack. Again, in hard mode, this will kill you. So, voila. And right after the pizzas, we have to KD the boss or stun the boss, just CC the boss. So once that's done, it's going to do the quarter pizzas. So I want to stay on the, on the side I'm on right now, wait for the quarter pizza, immediately sidestep. And voila, that's done. And right after this, he's going back into Might phase again. This is the part where the tank wants to stand at 9 o'clock and target the hammers towards the Mites and just move slowly, move clockwise. And as they break the shield, again, Zin over here is going to pick up this one to get three hammers. He's going to run to this Mite over here and kill him once his shield is broken. So we're going to see that now. Boom, his shield's broken, so Zin's gonna go up, he's gonna jump, kill it. So you can see over here that Koopo missed this might. So if you miss a might, it's not a big deal. The Koopo's just immediately moving over to now the 12 o'clock one. So what Zin needs to do now is he just automatically picks up three hammers and starts running towards the 12 o'clock one to wait until that shield is broken. And we're just waiting, and boom, you see the 12 o'clock shield is broken. So Zin just moves to the 12 o'clock one and jumps at it. And while that's happening, you can see that Koopo is just constantly targeting the hammers all the way across the room as he just finished this one, this one, this one. And now once he gets to the six o'clock position, then he can just strafe left or strafe right and just start strafing left and right to avoid the hammers. He doesn't need to continue to go clockwise. However, if he wants, he can. I don't recommend that though because it will hit the rest of the party members or there's an off chance of hitting the rest of the party members so I prefer to just leave the tank to have his own little zone over here where he can just straight left and right and bait out all the hammers. So we're just gonna DPS, DPS, DPS and we're just waiting for the people who are outside to block the orbs. So again over here we completed the mech so we got the text over here. So you can see this time that we did even it out. So both sides have zero stacks, so both sides are even. And now the boss is going to get stunned and not do his suction attack. So we're going to see that now. And you see, boom. You'll see that this boss has now dazed himself and he can't do anything and we get free DPS to hit the boss instead of him dazing us. However, once the boss gets up, he still will do his 5 hit explosion. So just get ready to sheath it or to use a home moon block for that attack. So we just attack the boss, and we would kill it before he does his 5 hit explosion, and we check the loot, and voila. It was nothing special, just a onyx scale and an artisanal material chest. So this is what we do in Soul Separation. Next up, I'm going to explain what we do outside of Soul Separation. So over here, I am doing outside of Soul Separation. So you can see I'm standing on this side, on the normal side, and the three range people are standing on Soul Separation side. So what I like to do is I still stand at 16 meters in the beginning. However, once the boss gets down to around 87%, 86%, I quickly start moving into the boss as I know 85% is when the mech phase begins. That way I'm sure to to be close to the boss and not to be sent into soul separation by accident. So you can see here, I'm just going to do my opener. I'm still chilling at 16 meters DPSing so I don't get hit by any of its attacks. And you'll see that once he hits around 85% over here, I quickly run close to the boss. That way I don't get sent into soul separation because I know that the other three range people are standing at 16 meters. So as long as I'm not in 16 meters, I won't get sent into soul sap. So here I'm DPSing the boss, 
And we need to stun over here. That was an instant stun, which is great. So I just DPS. And this time I need to keep in mind that since I am in the normal part of the map, he's immediately going to pizza our side first. So I need to get prepared to iframe this attack. So here I can SS the attack, it doesn't matter. And that attack over there, this pushback, you need to be very careful not to get hit by it because it does hurt a lot. Next, he's going to do it on the other side. You can see over here, he's going to do the same pizza attack or for the people who are in Soul Sap. So they iframe that and then same deal. And right after we finish that, remember his CC bars will open. We either need a KD or stun. In our case, we like to KD. And boom. And we just keep DPSing. Over here, you can see that I am in the wrong position because I'm so used to being soul separation that I stood in the wrong position. I needed to be over here and rotate this way. So I'm going to get hit by this attack and you'll see that it will hurt a lot. Boom. Again, I lost about 200k HP, which is quite a lot of health. However, luckily, you know, I had a lot of HP and I didn't die. So now is the hammer phase. So for the players outside, we need to block orbs. The moment that these mites die, when the people in soul separation kill the mites, it's going to become an orb and it's going to float slowly towards the boss and we're going to see that. And during this phase, you're going to see that Kupo, the tank, is constantly moving clockwise with these hammers getting thrown at me. So he's moving this way. So as a summoner, I need to be careful and not run this way and follow him. I kind of want to make sure that I'm like behind the hammers to make my life a lot easier. But we'll see what I do. So we'll see over here, he's throwing the hammers. So you can see over here that now on the map, players who are outside and not in soul separation, that we have different symbols. Once the mite dies in soul separation, it transfers into an orb and this orb will slowly float towards us. And you can also see that as the tank, you do not see the mites which are in soul separation. So you really have to make sure that you're reading the map very well and going by your gut feeling to target the hammers to hit all of these mites. So the tank plays a very important role during this boss fight. You're going to see that that orb is floating closely. Here is the orb and Bunder is ready to block it. Um, I prefer to block it over here, like right next to the boss. However, you can block right here as well if you want. It's really just personal preference. And I'll show you what the soul burst looks like in a second. So once he blocks it, you'll see that it looks exactly like a soul burst. This is the outer ring. Then it's going to do an inner ring, like right around him. Then it's going to do a middle ring. It's a three ring explosion. So you'll see that happen. There's the outer ring. There's the inner ring and there's the middle ring. You need to be careful with that ring not to hit any teammates. So you can see over here that I got hit by the rings that Bunder was doing. So I get dazed for a couple seconds. So I'm unable to uh, I'm unable to move. However, I'm just, luckily I'm lined up perfectly for the next orb. So when the orb comes over, I'll be able to block it. Another thing you also need to notice is the moment you block an orb, you will gain an extra hammer. So you can see that I have two hammers over here and Bunder has three hammers over here. So the moment that I block this orb, I will gain another hammer. So you need to be careful not to get more than three hammers because when you block an orb and you have three hammers, you will get dazed and you will not be able to move for five seconds. And another thing that we also need to pay attention to is of course the enrage bar over here. You can see that the people outside, so me, Bunder and Kupo, were already two over the bar compared to the people who are in soul separation. So whenever we have three hammers, I like to just run away from the boss and jump, just randomly jump so that you can burn away one of the hammers. Do not jump next to the boss to burn a hammer because if you jump next to the boss, you will be sent into soul separation. And it's the same the other way around. If you are in soul separation and you jump next to the boss, you'll be sent out of soul separation. So you need to be very careful about that. So we're going to see this now. The orb is going to float towards me and I'm going to block it. So I like to block the orb right here. So you can see that I'm standing basically five meters away from the boss and I like to block it here. And you'll see once I block the orb, boom, I block the orb and I have the little soul burst looking thing and I make sure that all of them touch the boss so that it lowers his shield. And next up over here, so you see over here that Bunder's going to block another orb, but you see that now he has two hammers because he burnt a hammer when he ran over here. He jumped and then now he ran over here with two hammers and he's going to block this one in order to destroy the shield. 
I see that now, he's gonna block it, boom, boom, and boom, and voila, you see we did the mechanic correctly, so it's postponed, and now we can just continue to DPS and just do the normal mechanic. So he did the suction attack again because we had one out we had one extra for the people outside instead of having it even. So in order to prevent that, either me or Bunder or Kupo needed to jump to burn one hammer so that we would all be at zero, and that prevents the boss from doing his suction and day's attack. So this days does is pretty annoying. However, we do make it in time. We just get up and instantly sheath, and it's no big deal. So once that's done, it's back to phase one again. We're back to the regular phase where we just DPS the boss and we wait to 40%. Again, he's going to do his dominion field. We get close to the boss. If you're outside, get far away from the boss. If you want to go into soul sap, you stun the boss immediately, waiting for the pizza attack to happen. Once the pizza attack happens, you need to iframe it. So we're waiting. Okay, pizza attack charging up, iframe, perfect. Now, again, we want to stand on the correct side for the quarter pizzas. We're waiting for the other side's attack to finish, and then we're going to CC. And boom, we KD right here. And once we KD, next up is the quarter pizzas. So we're waiting for the quarter pizzas to come up. Voila, quarter pizza, sidestep, quarter pizza, finish. All right, once this is done, it's going to be the hammer slash might phase. So again, he's going to be throwing the hammers at the tank. The tank needs to keep running and sidestepping and aiming at the at the mites. Once the mites die because the people in Soul Sep kill them, the orbs come out, we block the orbs. You see over there, Bunder blocked the orb too far away, so the Soul Burst explosions didn't exactly hit the boss. You want as many of those explosions to hit the boss to lower the shield. So you'll see there that uh, he only touched it once, I believe. And then, uh, so it didn't really take out his shield that much. So you see over here that I'm going to block this one. And voila, one, two, and three. And then we need to block one more. And we're again, there's another orb. Bunder blocks it. Again, he was too far. So, you know, he missed two of the soul burst explosions. And I believe only the third one hit over there. So we need to block an additional orb. However, since we have plenty of time, you can see that the judgment ticks down. And I think we have like 30 seconds to do this. Um, however, we just kill the boss before we actually completed the phase. And boom, the boss is dead. And what do we get? We got, again, a onyx scale and an artisanal uh, material chest. And that is it for this dungeon. It's not that difficult once you get the gist of it. However, it does take a little bit of practice in order to uh, to get comfortable with it. And again, this method, this tactic, only works in normal mode. In normal mode, you can just iframe the pizza attack. However, in hard mode, the pizza attack will kill you, so you have to do the proper mechanics. I might make a guide of the proper mechanics if there's enough people who are actually interested in it, but this dungeon is hard enough as it is for F8 that I feel like teaching this mechanic will make everyone's life a lot easier. But yeah, hopefully this video helped. If it did, I would appreciate a subscribe as it really does help out my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye! What can I say except you always